All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Mathagon Polypad to represent a, a simple two-step equations and then use Mathagon Polypad to solve those two-step equations. So let's get started. And in this case, what we're gonna do Let's start with 5x plus 12 equals 67. I'm going to give you a kind of a quick kind of overview of how to use polypad to build this expression, this equation, and solve it. So you'll notice on the left side, we've got all of these palettes on the left side here. And each one of these is a collection of uh, virtual manipulatives. All right. And so we're going to make use of, of course, algebra. And we're also going to make use of numbers. Uh, to model 5x plus 12 equals 67, there's a variety of ways we could do it with Mathagon Polypad. Uh, I'm going to start by clicking, uh, opening up the algebra palette. I'm going to drag over our balance beam, classic balance beam motif that we're going to use to model 5x plus 12. I could just grab an X. There's an X and I need five of them. So I'm just going to hold down the option key and I'm going to just drag and I'm going to drag and then I'm going to drag and there is my 5x. Now to model 12, now I could grab a, a unit and I could just drag over 12 of them. One, two, three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the numbers palette. I'm gonna go to the numbers card. And uh, since I, I've, I've been given some presets, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, 100, and 1,000, but I can also just go down here and type in a custom number, in this case 12, and I can drag that over and there is my 5x plus 12. If I wanted to, I could have deleted that 12 and I could have brought over a 10 and a 2 and there's my 12, or I could have dragged those cards on top of each other and it would add them together, combine them to give me 12. So I have a variety of ways to get to modeling 5x plus 12 on the left side of the uh, equation. And then of course I've got 67 on the right side. Probably the most efficient way of doing that is create a custom card 67, drag it over there. Now the balance doesn't know that these are supposed to be equal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on that center of that balance and you'll notice I've got this word that's gonna pop up on my screen. Uh, and I'm going to click on balance to tell the computer that these two sides are supposed to be balanced. And so now I've got 5x plus 12 is equal to 67. A variety of ways we can think about this problem. One of which is I could um, add negative 12 to both sides. All right, so I'm going to create a negative 12 as my custom tile on the left. And I know I need two of them, don't I? So I'm gonna put one on the left and then I'm gonna put one on the right and it should return to balance. And sure enough, it does. And then I can drag the cards, uh, the negative 12 and the positive 12 on top of each other. And that's gonna give me zero. And I could drag the negative 12 on top of the 67. That's gonna simplify it to give me 55. And if I wished, I could delete that zero because it's really not adding value um, to this equation. And so now I have five X's is equal to 55. And if that idea of division doesn't immediately come to mind, uh, kind of a neat thing we can do is go back to our, on our number palette, I could type in, um, these prime factor circles, and I can create a custom prime factor, which is 55. And then if I separate these, so that I can see that 55 has two prime factors. And if I just sit, drag the blue one out, I don't know which is which, but if I separate, oh, I can see that the blue represents the five and the red represents the 50, uh, the 11. Multiplying those two together, I get 55. So I can separate that. So that tells me that 55 is really five copies of 11. So I can go to my number cards if I wish, create a custom card of 11, and I can say, well, I can get five of those. 
and I can replace the 55 with 511s. And sure enough, my balance beam returns to being level. And I can see that each of these X's represents an 11. So if I want to remove four X's, that means I'm going to remove four 11s, and I can see that one X is equal to 11. So there you go. That's the quick, down and dirty way you can use Mathagon Polypad to uh, represent an equation and then solve it. Now, by the way, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to hit back, 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 and I'm just going to keep going back, 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 and we're going to model 5X plus 12. So let's. there's my 5 x let's get back to 12. there's my 5x plus 12 and let's get back to my 67 and there we what there we go okay so again just in case it it loses track that it, this is supposed to be balanced i just rebalanced it okay now as a student don't we want students to be thinking flexibly and rather than thinking about all this fancy algebra stuff Maybe we can get students to say to themselves, well, on the left, I've got a bunch of junk. Those are the X's plus 12 is equal to 67. So maybe what I can do is I can take that 67 and represent it as 55 plus 12. Now I'm going to replace the 67 with 55 plus 12. And now I can see that, hey, look at this. this these 5x's plus 12 is equal to 55 plus 12. Therefore, using logic, I can see that these 5x's represents the 55. And so we can help students begin the process of using logic uh, to think about this algebra rather than just rotely doing some sort of do the opposite and isolate the variable and all that sort of stuff. Let's take a moment to try and introduce logic into this whole process as well, right? And I can see, if I want, I can see that, oh, that these 12 and these 12 um, are no longer really necessary in understanding the value of x. And now I can see that 5x's is equal to 55. Therefore, each x must be equal to 11. All right. So uh, just a just a momentary, I know I'm going crazy, but an idea of, hey, let's introduce logic into uh, mathematics a little bit here. One last problem. Okay. So we've got 4x minus 12 is equal to 32. Again, let's represent that using our algebra tiles. So there's four x's, one, two, three, four. I need to represent that minus 12. So I'm going to do a number card and then bring in a minus 12. So there's my 4x minus 12. And then I need to represent 32. So I'm going to drag in my 32. My balance doesn't know that these are supposed to be balanced. So I'm going to click the center of my balance, click the word balance. And now I have told Mathagon Polypad that these two sides are supposed to be equal. I know that I could, if I wished, I could add a 12 to both sides and that should keep the two uh, sides of the balance equal, right? And then of course, if I wanted to, I could combine the, the 12 and the negative 12 and I get my zero. I can combine, combine the 12 and the 32 and get 44. And then I can now see that 4x's is equal to 44. If I'm not sure about the relationship between 4 and 44, I can use my prime factor circle, create a prime factor circle of 44. And I'm just going to put that there. And then I'm going to make a cut. What? Undo. And I'm going to make a copy of that just so that you could see that 44 is really a, four, a 2, a 2, an 11. But I can take those twos and I can mush them back together again. And I can see that 44 is really, can be thought of as four groups of 11. 11 again. Should have thought of my numbers a little bit better. That's okay. We'll live. And so I can take that 44 and I can replace it with four groups 
of 11. Let's see, if I take off that 44 and replace it with four groups of 11, ah, look at that, I've returned to balance. And therefore, I can see that these three x's must be the same thing as those three 11s. So when I delete them, I can see that x is equal to 11 because it's still balanced. All right. Now, folks, that is how you can use Mathagon Polypad to, one, represent an equation, and two, solve an equation to find the value of that variable. In this case, it was x.